Shalom, brothers and sisters, and once again, Shabar Israel coming at you live with another lesson on today on the behalf of Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. And guys, family and friends, this lesson will be carried out um, with me attending my youngest son, which is Samar, Judah Israel. And so let's just hope that he maintain and just keep his calm while this video is being carried out. All right. So the topic of discussion concerning this video is once again reflecting back on the Apocrypha, guys. Back on the Apocrypha. All right. And so let's just go ahead and get into it. Right. Apocrypha. It says Apocrypha. Um, so let me cut the speakers on in the back so you guys can hear the pronunciation. All right. Apocrypha. 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 A-P-O-C-R-Y-P-H-A. -P -P it says, this is a noun. Apocrypha. Apocrypha. All right, guys. So, uh, let's, let's, let's zoom in on that. I'm trying to work with my son here. I'm trying to attend to him at the same time, but it's cool. The biblical or related writings, it says, not forming part of, of the accepted canon of scripture. Writings or reports not considered genuine. So this is what the white man believes. The white man believes that the apocrypha, apocrypha. is not considered genuine. The white man believes that the apocrypha, apocrypha. apocrypha. is 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 uh not forming part of the accepted canon of scripture. And we're gonna show you that that's a lie, and that the apocrypha was always part of the Bible. Whether you choose to believe it or not. Now, however, guys, we're going to look into this section over here. It says the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha are works usually written of unknown authorship or of doubtful origin. They said doubt, doubtful origin. Biblical Apocrypha is a set of texts included in the Latin Vulgate and Septuagint but not in Hebrew Bible. The Apocrypha wasn't written in Hebrew. The majority of the Apocrypha, Apocrypha was written in Greek, and it was translated, guys. But it doesn't mean that it don't share uh, of the Bible, all right? While Catholic tradition considers some of these texts to be deuteronomical, Protestants consider them, Protestants consider them apocryphal. You see what I'm saying? Which apocryphal means hidden books. So according to the Catholic according to, to Catholic Catholic tradition, they consider some of these texts to be uh duto row canonical. Alright, and Protestants consider them apocryphal. Alright. So what so to wrap this up in a long nutshell, because I'm not gonna do this video again. I did a video uh breaking down the apocryphal. Um, a, just, a, just a partial video breaking down the Apocrypha and you can look into that but you can believe that the Apocrypha was always part of the Bible and it's just like around the 18th century the books was removed by the Catholic Church y'all alright uh, let's go into here let's go into here the Apocrypha alright I'm going to show you guys something so let's browse through some images right quick alright you see 1611 alright guys King James Bible printed originally with all 80 books. The Apocrypha was first removed in 1885, leaving only 66 books. You can see it from yourself. The 1611 King James Bible had all 80 books inside of it. The Apocrypha was removed 1885. And not only the 1611 um, King James Bible, the Geneva Bible also has the Apocrypha in it. I'm going to show you guys. Ain't that right, Zamar? Ain't that's right. Tell them. That's right. So, the Geneva Bible has the Apocrypha in it. Now, I'm going to show you the Geneva Bible. Geneva Bible. So, you guys can stop with this madness about the Apocrypha. Talking about the Apocrypha is not legit and it was never part of the Bible. I'm going to show you guys. This is the Geneva Bible, guys. You see that? The Geneva Bible. The Geneva Bible. That even has the Apocrypha in it. The Geneva Bible came 
They're in fifteen ninety nine, guys. You see that it says Geneva Bible fifteen ninety nine, and that that has the apocryphal books in it. All the Bibles had the apocryphal books in it before the eighteenth century, before the Catholic Church took the Bibles out. All right. Bibles, let's say Bibles, Bibles before the King James. Bibles before King James. You see. Bibles before the King James. Uh, let's look into some of them if we can see. All these Bibles before King James, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, we don't see any there. But um, just kind of do your research on Bibles before King James. And you can see that the Apocrypha was inside of them. I don't need to really just keep pressing that all right so let's move on now i'm going to show you guys that um uh, the messiah quoted from the apocrypha if you don't believe it was part of the bible the the messiah quoted from the apocrypha books yeah man the lesson by the way. yeah baby it by the way tomorrow tell family friends along hey y'all okay now the apocrypha right the apocryphal, man, I'm going to show you that the Messiah quoted from the apocryphal. Because in the Messiah's time, there was no New Testament on the scene. I keep telling y'all that. And, and hopefully this is the last time. So the Messiah quoted from this book, man. He, he quoted from the apocryphal. And he also quoted from the Tanakh. So let me show you guys. Tanakh. I don't even need Tanakh and apocryphal. I don't even know if I'm spelling it right. But hopefully they bring it up. The Tanakh, man. Okay. This is the Tanakh. The Jewish scriptures. The Tanakh. The Tanakh is what you call the Old Testament books or the Old Testament, the 39 books. All right. And so you can see right here for yourselves. Let me pull this up. Wait a minute, guys. I need to blow this up so you guys can see it. I'm trying to hold him at the same time and do this. So the Jewish scriptures, the Tanakh. What is the Tanakh? The Tanakh is the Old Testament, man. Basically from Genesis to uh, Malachi. All right. The Tanakh consists of the, the Torah, which is, or you could say the Pentateuch, which is the law. The, the Tanakh consists of the prophets, the former prophets, the, the, the major and minor prophets. And then the Tanakh consists of the writings and history. And all of these makes up what you call the Old Testament, but it's really called the 39 books. It's really called uh, the, the Tanakh. And the Messiah quoted from all these books in his time. And last but not least, yes, guys, he also quoted from, you guessed it, he quoted from the Apocrypha. And I'm going to show you, show you before we close it out. So the Tanakh and the Apocrypha is all the Messiah had in his time. All right. Go ahead and bring him up. Yahweh Shai, the Black Messiah. Yahweh Shai, guys. All right, so uh, let's bring up a good picture of according to the scripture. All right, as you can see, Yahweh Shai, you know what I'm saying? The true Messiah, not not the white one, not the false white image, not the, not the image of the beast, but the true Messiah, man. He quoted from the, the Apocrypha. He quoted from the Apocrypha. Daniel chapter 10 verse 6. Revelation chapter 1 verse 12 through 15. Gives you a biblical description of the imagery of, of the Messiah. How he looked. How he, how, he, how he looked back in the day. Yeah daddy. Yeah tell him daddy. Tell him the truth. Edify him daddy. Okay. And so now I'm going to show you that the Apocrypha. The Messiah quoted from these books. For those of you that don't agree that the, the Apocrypha was part of the Bible, let's get into it. Now, let me show you some scriptures. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Blue Letter, right? BlueLetterBible.com. All right? And we'll go from there. All right? So, okay. So, I am in Blue Letter Bible. And Matthew 6 and 12 will be the first book, chapter, and verse that we're going to prove that the Messiah 
quoted from the Apocrypha. So that's Matthew 6 and 12. So Matthew 6 and 12. Going to that. Matthew 6 and 12. All right, guys. It says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I'm going to read down to 15. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive man of their trespasses, the heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not man their trespasses, neither will the father forgive your trespasses. Now, where did this come from? Did the Messiah just make this stuff up? No, he pulled this from the Apocrypha. I'm going to show you. So let's go to, let's go in, in the Apocrypha now. So we are going into the Apocrypha. And let's go to, uh, in the Apocrypha. We are also in the Apocrypha now. And let's go to Sirach 28. 28 verse 2 and show you where this come from. So Rock 28 verse 2. We're in the Apocryphal books, guys. Okay. The Apocryphal books. That's also known as Duto Run Canonical. Alright. And so Sirach 28 and 2. Cause I did this, guys. It took me a while to do this. But I did this on my own to show you that um, the Messiah quoted from the Apocrypha. All right. And so Sirach in the Apocrypha, I'm trying to find it, guys. There it is. The book of Ben Sirach. Or you could say Ecclesiasticus. Or you could say Sirach in the Apocrypha. Let's go to 28. Chapter 28. Verse 2, watch this. In the Apocrypha, it says, Forgive your neighbor the hurt that he had. Forgive your neighbor the hurt that he have done unto thee. So shall thy sins be forgiven when thy prayers. See, so he said, Forgive your neighbor for how he treated you, and so shall your sins be forgiven when you pray. Now watch this, guys. Matthew 6 and 15. But if ye forgive not men of their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. See? Matthew 6 and 14 backing up. For if you forgive man their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Where did he get that from? Sirach, a.k.a. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 2. Forgive your neighbor the hurt that he has done unto thee, so shall thy sins be forgiven when thy prayers. So you can see that the Messiah, he quoted from the Apocrypha, y'all. For those of you that say the Apocrypha is not part of the Bible, that's a goddamn lie. We're trying to show you. Right here, Matthew 6 and 15, and also Matthew 6 and 14 in the Bible. These two, this section right here, all this section right here that you see highlighted in blue, all this section right here was pulling from Ecclesiasticus, a.k.a. Sirach, the 28th chapter, verse 2 in the Apocrypha. That's where this section in the blue pulls from. We're going to move on. Let's go to Luke 1 and 17. In the Bible, Luke 1 and 17. Those of you that don't believe the Bible was part of the, uh, the Apocrypha was part of the Bible. Luke 1 and 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And this was all in reference to John the Baptist. So Luke 1 and 17 say he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Talk about John the Baptist, right? That's Luke 1 and 17, right? Let's go to Sirach 48 and 10. So Sirach, or what you call Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 48, verse 10. And let's, let's get it. Chapter 48, verse 10. All right. Uh, let's type in 48. 48, verse 10. Watch this, guys. 
in the Apocrypha. Who was ordained for reproofs in their times to pacify the wrath of the Lord, the judgment, before before it, before it break forth into fury, and to turn, see that? And to turn the heart of the Father into the Son, and to restore the trials of Jacob. See? Now all this is concerning, all this is concerning the prophet Elias, which was John the Baptist in the reincarnation. Prophet Elias. In Greek, that's talking about Elijah because the Apocrypha was written in Greek. So when it says Elias in Ecclesiasticus chapter 48, beginning with verse 1, when it talks about Elias, that's talking about Elijah because that's how you say Elijah in the Greek. And the Apocrypha was written in the Greek. And it was translated later on down the line. It says, Then stood up Elijah the prophet as as, as fire and his word burned like a lamp he brought he brought a sore famine upon them and by his zeal he diminished their number see verse 3 by the word of the Lord he shut up the heavens and also three times brought down fire verse 4 of Sirach 48 in the Apocrypha Elias how was thou honored and thou wonderest these. And who made glory like unto thee? Verse 5. Who did rise up a dead man from death. And his soul from the place of the dead. By the word of the Most High. Who brought kings to destruction. And honorably man from their bed. Verse 7. Who heard the rebuke of the Lord in Sinai. And in Harab. The judgment of vengeance. Verse 8. Who anointed kings to take revenge. And prophets. To succeed after him. Verse 9. Who was taken up in the whirlwind of fire. Now who was taken up in the whirlwind of fire. Elijah. You can read about that in 1st and 2nd Kings. Who was taken up in the whirlwind of fire. Elijah. And in a chariot of fiery horses. Verse 10, who was ordained for reproofs in their times to pacify the wrath of the Lord's judgment before it break forth into fury and to turn the heart, listen guys, it says, and to turn the heart of the father and to the son and to restore the tribes of Jacob. So when the Messiah came on the scene, because you got to think about this, the Apocrypha was on the scene before the Messiah. The Apocrypha, these Apocrypha books, listen good guys, these Apocrypha books was written before the Messiah was even born. The Apocrypha, to make a long story short, the Apocrypha was here before the Messiah, who you call Jesus, who we know as Yahweh's child, was even born. The Apocrypha was already here because the Grecians oppressed the Israelites before the, before the Messiah was even born. So when you're talking about the Grecians oppressing the Israelites, that was going on before the Messiah even was born. You see, that's why I'm trying to tell you during the Messiah's time, he quoted from these books. And this is literal proof. So in Luke 1 and 17, when it talks about John the Baptist, it says he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. You see, when it talks about this in Luke 1 and 17, that was our, that was pulling from the apocryphal books. That was pulling from Sirach. That was pulling from Ecclesiasticus. That was pulling from the apocryphal. In chapter 48, verse 10. And all this is mentioned as Elijah's being John the Baptist. The whole 48 chapter, man, starts off talking about Elijah. So when you get down to Sirach and the apocryphal, 48 verse 10. It says, and to turn the heart of the father into the son and to restore the tribes of Jacob. You can see that's listed right there in Luke 1 and 17. Talking about our Elijah's will go in the spirit of the spirit and power of John the Baptist, because Elijah was John and John the Baptist reincarnated. And it says to turn the hearts of the father to the children. So where else this came from? How did where did where did Luke 1 and 17 pull this from? From the Apocrypha, y'all. 
from the apocryphal books, man. From the apocryphal, guys. All right. Luke 1 and 28. Let's look at that in the Bible. I'm just showing you guys. This is a cold cut for any one of you that want to reject the apocryphal books and say they was not part of the Bible. Well, if the apocryphal books weren't part of the Bible, you wouldn't have what you would have in the New Testament concerning the four Gospels. Luke 1 and 28. It says, And the angel came into... And the angel came into... Matter of fact, let's go back to what we just went to. Let's go back to Sirach 40... Uh, Luke 1 and 17. Let's go back to that because I want to click the red letter... The red letters on to show you. Luke 1 and 17. Alright. Now... We dealt with that already, okay? So now, let's go to Luke 1 and 28. Let's go to that. Now we're in Luke 1 and 28. It says, And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. This is what the angel told the mother of the Messiah, the mother of Yahweh Shah, who they call Jesus, Mary. This is what the angel told her, right? Blessed and blessed are thou among women. They also told her, the angel told Mary she was highly favored, right? So let's go to Judith 13 and 8 in the Apocrypha. Judith 13 and 8 in the Apocrypha. Alright, here we go. Judith 13 and 8. Judah 13. Now watch this. In the Apocrypha, Judah 13 and 8. Let's talk about Judah, right? I meant Judah 13 and 18. It's a lot, guys. Judah 13 and verse 18. Judah 13 and 18. Then said Ozias unto her, O daughter, says, Blessed art thou of the Most High, God above all the woman upon the earth and blessed be the Lord God which have created the heavens and the earth which had directed thee to the cutting of the head of the chief of our enemies because you know Judah Judah if you if you read about the story of Judah in the apocrypha right Judah cut this this heathen head slap off right all right, this heathen king, Judah, decapitated this heathen king. I'm not going to get into the story. Judah was a Jew, all right, a, a, a Jew, a woman of the Jews from the tribe of Judah, so-called black woman, that decapitated the king's head, a heathen king's head, all right, on the behalf of her nation, all right. And so when Judah did that to that heathen king, it said, that she was blessed of the most high above all women upon the earth. And, she, you know, man, she was highly favored, man. See? Because she cut off the head of the chief of our enemies. See? So that blessing, highly favored among God, that wasn't only applied to Mary. Because way before Mary was even born, maybe way before Mary was even born, Dealing with the book of Judah. It was another woman that was blessed of the most high highly favored. And that was Judah. You see? So when you get in Luke 1 and 28. The angel came unto her and said. Hell thou art hell. That thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Even though that's referring to Mary. Where did that, where did that, that saying come from? Blessed art thou highly favored. It came from the apocrypha. It came from um, the story of Judah. When Judah decapitated the, the heathen king on the behalf of, of our people and cut off his head. You see? This is Judah 13, 18 in the Apocrypha, man. Let's move on, guys. Luke 1 and 52. Because Luke definitely pulled from the Apocrypha. Out of the four Gospels, the book of Luke definitely, definitely pulls from the Apocrypha. Luke 1 and 58, man. Let's 
Let's start with the 52nd verse. Luke chapter 1 verse 52. Luke 1 and 52. All right. He says, he had put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of a low degree. You see. Luke 1 and 52, he had put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them in low degree. All right. Watch this. Luke 1 and 52. Now, we just read that, right? Let's go to Sirach. 10 and 14 in the Apocrypha. So rock 10 and 14. All right. So rock also Ecclesiasticus 10 and 14. Here we go. It says, the Lord has cast down the thrones of proud princes, see, and set up their meat, and set up the meat in their stead. See that? The Lord has cast down thrones of proud princes and set up the meat in their stead. Luke 1 and 52. He had put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low decree. A low degree. He uh, put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them in low degree. Where did that come from? It came from Sirach, aka Ecclesiasticus, chapter uh, 10, verse 14. The Lord have cast down the thrones of the proud princesses and set up the meat in their stead, man. You see, guys, yes, man. Don't never let someone tell you that the apocryphal books were not part of the Bible. We showing you where where these uh, book chapter and verses in Luke pulls from, and also in Matthew. So let's continue on. Let's go to Luke chapter twelve, verse nineteen. Luke twelve and nineteen. Luke twelve and nineteen. And I would say to my soul, so. Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. See that? Uh, let's look at verse 20. Luke 12 and 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou, prov which thou provided? So this is Luke 12 verses 19 and 20 see and I'm not doing no I'm not doing no explanation of every book chapter and verse I'm just showing you guys that in the gospels when you see these certain book chapter and verses they pull it from the apocrypha man and this in, in, in this case Luke chapter 12 verses 19 and 20 I'm going to show you Luke 12 19 and 20 all in the blue box all this came from the apocrypha so, where did it come from? Sirach, chapter 11, verse 19. Let's go back into the Apocrypha. Sirach, chapter 11, verse 19. So, let's head over to Sirach, a.k.a. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11, beginning with the 19th verse. Alright, let's go down to verse 19. It says, Whereas he said, I have found rest, and now will eat continually of my goods and yet he knoweth not what time shall come upon him and that he must leave those things to others and die you see this is Sirach chapter 11 verse 19 so whereas he said I have found rest and now will eat continually of my goods and yet he knows not what, what time shall come upon him and that he must leave those things to others and die. Now when we go back into Luke chapter 12 verse 19. It says and I would say to my soul. I would say to my soul. So 
Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. You see that? What did the Sirach say? What did Ecclesiastes and the Apocrypha say? What did they say in uh, 11 and 19? Whereas he said, I have found rest, and now will eat continually of my goods, and yet he knows not what time shall come upon him. See? And that he must leave those things to others and die. Right here. Luke 12, 19. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Luke 12 and 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So you can see Luke chapter 12 verses 19 and 20 pulled from uh, the apocryphal. Sirach, a.k.a. Ecclesiastic, is uh, chapter 11, verse 19. Let's continue on, guys. Uh, let's look at Luke 18. Luke 18, 22. Luke 18, 22. And Luke 18, 22. Now, when Shai, who they called Jesus, heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Luke 18 22. Now, where did this come from? You would think that the Messiah just made this stuff up, man. The Messiah didn't make nothing up because the Messiah did not come to do away with the law or the prophets. The Messiah did not come to do away with any book, chapter, and verse in this Bible. He came to fulfill it. So what books was written of the Messiah before he was born? The Tanakh, which is the 39 books of the Old Testament and also the Apocryphal books, the 14 books. All right? That the Roman Catholic Church eradicated from the Bible. Luke 8 and 22. Now, where did this come from in Luke, 8, Luke 18 and 22? Where did this come from? Sirach 29 and 11. So we back in Sirach. We back in Sirach. And let's go to chapter 29. Because most of the quotations in Luke definitely pulls from Sirach. So let's go to Sirach uh, 29. Right? Luke 18, 22. Where did that come from? Sirach 29 and 11. Sirach 29 and 11. Also known as Ecclesiasticus. Sirach 29 and 11 and the Apocrypha. I'm going to show you guys. It says. Lay up thy treasure according to the commandments of the Most High. And it shall bring thee more profit than gold. You see that? Sirach 29 verse 11 tells you. Lay up thy treasures according to the commandments of the Most High. And it shall bring thee more profit than gold. You see that? So Luke 8, 22. Now when Jesus, Yahweh Shai, heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute it unto the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. You know what I'm saying? So in the Apocrypha, Ecclesiastes, Sirach. Lay up thy treasure according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall and it shall bring thee more profit than gold. And it also says in the Bible. Watch this. It also says in the Bible. It says, uh, in the Gospels. Let's go down right quick concerning the treasures. In the Gospels. It also says in. Matthew 6 and 19. You can see it for yourself. Lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where a mock. No it's a salat. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. Where a moth and rust does corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal. Matthew 6 and 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth, doth corrupt 
and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So right there, man, that goes back to Sirach, a.k.a. Ecclesiasticus uh, 2911, man. You see? Lay up your treasure according to the commandments of the Most High. See that? So I'm just showing you that the Messiah, man, he quoted using the Apocrypha. Matthew 6 and 20. As you can see that. Okay. Matthew 6 and 20, as you can see. All right. We're going to continue to move on, man. We're going to continue to move on. Because I had to pick these. I had to literally pick these out myself. I didn't get this from any video or anything. I had to labor and go through these things and pick these things out so that you can see. And it took quite a while to do it. Now let's go to John 3 and 12 in the Bible. John 3 and 12. It says, If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? This is John 3 and 12. Where did this come from? Let's go to the Wisdom of Solomon and the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon 9... Chapter 9, verse 16. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 16 in the Apocrypha. All right, here it is. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 16, guys. The Wisdom of Solomon was wrote, written by King Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 16. Watch this. Okay. And hardly do we guess or write at things that are upon earth. And we labor, do we find the things that are before us? But the things that are in heaven, who have who have searched out. Okay, so wisdom of Solomon, nineteen sixteen. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth, and we labor, do we find the things that are before us? But the things that are in heaven, who have searched out. John three and twelve. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? You see, it came from the wisdom of Solomon and the Apocrypha, man. Chapter 9, verse 16. And hardly do we guess all right at things that are upon the earth. Things that are upon the earth. And we labor, do we find the things that are before us? But the things that are in heaven, who have searched out? John 3 and 12. If I told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? The Messiah was pulling from the Apocrypha in his time, man. He was not making this stuff up. He was not making this stuff up off the head. So I'm just I'm just showing you Yahweh Shai, who they call Jesus Christ, ignorantly quoted from the Apocrypha, man. Yahweh Shai, the black Messiah. Who they call Jesus Christ quoted from the Apocrypha, man. And I'm here to break these chains off your minds. Brothers, sisters, family and friends. Those of you that don't believe that the Apocrypha was part of the Bible. And you want to say that these books are not legit. I'm here to break the chains from your mind. I'm here to tear down this stronghold. I'm here to break down, break, break, release those chains off your mind, off your spirit. To show you that, yes... The Apocryphal books was always part of the Bible and the Messiah in his time. That's the only thing he had to quote from. In his time, he had the Tanakh, which is the 39 books of the Old Testament, and the 14 Apocryphal books in his time. Because we know that the Greeks oppressed the Jews way before the Messiah was born. So what record was written during the Grecian period? What record took place? The Apocryphal books. The, the Apocryphal books, especially in 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Tells you how the Jews was, was greatly oppressed by the Greeks before the Messiah was even born. So the apocryphal books, going back to the Tanakh, was the only thing, was only reference that the Messiah had to use in his time. But those of you that want to insist on that the apocryphal books was not part of the Bible, I'm here to break these chains, these shackles from off your mind, man. All right? Now, let's go to John 
5 and 18. Just showing you what you read in your four Gospels, most of this stuff was pulling from the apocryphal books. John 5 and 18. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him. Talking about how the Jews wanted to kill the Messiah. The Jews sought the more to kill him because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So this is what the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, those leaders of the Jews, they, they wanted to kill the Messiah because supposedly he had broke the Sabbath. And he was saying that he was uh, the son of God. But he said also that God was his father. Now, where did this come from? Let's go to the wisdom of Solomon. In the Apocrypha, the wisdom of Solomon. Let's go back to the wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 2, verse 16. Watch this. Chapter 2, verse 16. Here we go. 2 and 16. In the Apocrypha. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounced the end of the just to be blessed. And make it his boast that God is his father, man. See, so the Messiah was prophesied to come even in the apocryphal books. Because who written it, who wrote this down, who recorded this account? King Solomon, man. This is why we are reading from the wisdom of Solomon. King Solomon prophesied in the spirit of the Messiah to come. In the apocrypha, the apocryphal books speaks about the uh coming of the Messiah. Yahweh Shai. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 16 in the Apocrypha. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounced the end of the just to be blessed. And make it his boast that God is his father. Man, who is that? That's talking about Yahweh Shai. That's talking about Yahweh Shai, man. That's talking about Yahweh Shai, man. That's why in John 5 and 18, therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Where was this recorded? In the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 16. When it says he making his boast that God is his father. So don't play with me, man. Most of these books that you read in the gospel, most of these four gospels, the books concerning the four gospels was heavily quoted from the apocrypha, man. Let's go on to the next one. John 10 and 29. Let's go to John chapter 10, verse 29. John 10 and 29. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. The Messiah is talking about the elect, man. Alright? John 10, 29, as you can see, these are the words of the Messiah in red. So no man is able to pluck the the no man is able to come along and pluck the elect of the nation of Israel out of the Father's hand. Meaning that no man is able to come along and, you know, give you false doctrine and philosophies and then you be led by it if you're part of the elect of the nation of Israel. John 10 and 29, my father which gave them me is greater than, is greater than all because the heavenly father is. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. You know, and that's, that's John 10 and 29. Let's go to, where did this come from? Let's go to the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. In the Apocrypha, the wisdom of Solomon, 3, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, guys, chapter 3, verse 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them, man. But the soul of the righteous are in the hands of God, and there shall no torment touch them. John 10 and 29 in the Bible. My father which gave them me is greater than all. 
and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Where did he get this from? The Messiah was quoted from the wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, chapter 3, verse 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of God, and there shall no torment touch them. See, the elect is going to be liberated. The elect is going to be saved. All this calamity that's coming, all this hell about to break loose, it's not going, it's not going, to, it's not going to touch the elect of the nation of Israel. Because the soul of the righteous are in the hands of God, and there shall no torment touch them, man. That's why it says that the elect will be delivered from the second death. You know, with the second death has no power over, man. You see? Um, and so, let's continue on, guys. Going back into the Bible, John 10 and 22. I don't care how long this lesson takes. I'm going to prove to you that the Messiah quoted from the Apocrypha. These four Gospels was is basically pulling from the Apocrypha, man. If you don't believe the Apocrypha was part of the Bible. Maybe I can you give you the cross references or the precepts. John 10 and 29. So let's go to John 10 and 29 in the Bible. My father which gave them me is greater than I. Is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Well, we did that already. Let's go to John 10 and 22. So let's go back up a couple verses. John 10 and 22. John 10 and 22. Write these verses down, guys. John 10 and 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. So you can see right there, man. The Messiah walked in the temple at Solomon's porch during the time of the Feast of Dedication. At Jerusalem, and it was winter. Concerning John 10 and 22, right? Now you can go to 1 Maccabees in the Apocrypha. So let's head over to the Apocrypha. And let's go to 1 Maccabees, man. Okay? Let's see if we're going to bring that up. 1 Maccabees. And let's go to the fourth, the fourth chapter, guys. 1 Maccabees, fourth chapter, beginning with verse verses 36. 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 36. Alright. Then said Judas, Judas Maccabees. Then said Judas, Judas was a Jew that revolted against the Grecian powers. Then said Judas and his brethren, his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomfited. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Right? Let's skip down to verse 56 for the sake of time. And 1 Maccabees chapter 4. And it says, And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days. And offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrifice. And, so, and sacrifice the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. So the feast of dedication as you can see. Uh, goes on for eight days uh, which we should be keeping as the Jews blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans not Christmas verse 59 it says and moreover Judas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days so he's telling you that the feast of dedicated should annually be kept and it never died, it never stopped. So we as the Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans must carry out the feast of dedication annually. How how long the feast of dedication is carried out? Eight days. Now when it talks about in St. John 10 and 29, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter, where did this come from? It came from the Apocrypha. First Maccabees chapter 4, verses uh, you can you can just read that whole chapter four, man, and you'll see for yourself. I just pointed out the golden verses to, to show you that John ten and twenty two pulls from the apocrypha and First Maccabees chapter four. All right, so let's continue on. Let's go to Matthew chapter seven. Matthew chapter seven. Matthew chapter seven, verse seventeen. All right, guys. Matthew 7 and 17. It says, 
Even so, every green tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Matthew 7 and 17, we will, we will read on down to the 19th verse. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Matthew 7 and 19, every, every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down, cast into the fire. Now, where did the Messiah get this from, man? Let's go to Sirach 12 and 3 in the Apocrypha. Back in the Apocrypha, Sirach 12 and 3. So what you heard from the Messiah mouth is nothing new. He All this came from the Apocrypha because he studied it in his time. Sirach, a.k.a. Ecclesiasticus 12 verse 3. No excuses after this video, guys. You will see for yourselves that the Apocrypha was always part of the Bible and that the four Gospels heavily pulled from it because it was written before Christ was even born. Sirach 12 and 3. Sirach 12 and 3. Or some may call this Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. There can no good come to him that is always occupied and evil. There can no good come to him that is always occupied and evil, nor to him that gives no alms. The Messiah just put a twist on it. So in Matthew chapter 7, verse 17, I'm going to highlight all this area from Matthew chapter 7, verse 17 to 19. It says, even so every good tree bring forth good fruit, but a, a corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit. The Messiah just put a twist on it, man. But really, it came from uh, Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, verse 3. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. You see, the Messiah just said in Matthew, chapter 7, verses 17 through 19, he said, so every green tree bringing forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Every so good, every good tree bring forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. Matt, Matthew 17, 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Matthew 17, Matthew, Matthew 7 and 19, every tree that bring not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire. You see, there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. And that came from Ecclesiasticus, a.k.a. Sirach, 12 and 3, from the Apocrypha. Matthew 7 and 6. I'm, I'm showing you all the book chapter and verses that the Gospels pull from using their power. Matthew 7 and 6. Believe it or not, guys, I'm showing you the literal proof. Matthew 7 and 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now, where did the Messiah pull this from, man? Because these are the words of the Messiah. These are the words of the Messiah, as you can see and read. Where did he pull this from in Matthew 7 and 6? Give not which is holy unto the dog. Cast not your pearls before swine. He pulled from the he pulled from back in the apocrypha. He pulled from Sirach 12, chapter 12, verse 5. Watch this. Skip down right here to verse 5. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back your bread and give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. You see that? What it says in Matthew 7 and 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them on their foot. Turn again and rend you. Here it is. Ecclesiasticus. Sirach. In the Apocrypha. Right? Chapter 12, verse 5. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back your bread and give it not to him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. You see? So the Messiah just put a twist on him. He said, Give not which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearl before swine, lest they trample them. As you can see right there, man. The Messiah just kind of put a twist on it, y'all. I'm going to show you something else concerning it. Also in the Apocrypha, if you take a look at Baruch 4 and 3, 
it says give not thy honor to another nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation give not thy honor to another nor the things that are profitable unto, unto thee to a strange nation see that and that's in reference to Matthew 7 and 6 give not that which is holy to the dogs neither cast ye your pearls before swine the dogs and the swine is the strange nations in Baruch chapter 4 verse 3 give not thy honor to another nor the things that are profitable and to thee to a strange nation. We showed you that Baruch 4 and 3, the strange nations are the dogs and the swine. And we also showed you in Sirach, aka Ecclesiastes 12, verse 4, right? And this is all in the apocryphal. Give to the give to the godly man, help not a sinner. It says Sirach 12 and 3. There can no good come to him that's always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth alms. You see, and and like I said, we touched on verse 5. It says, Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread, give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. And there, there you go. Matthew 7 and 6. Cast not, give not holy to the dogs, cast, your, cast, cast not thy pearl before swine, lest they trample them. So we can see right there, man. These book chapter and verses in the Gospels heavily pulled from the Apocrypha. And if you want to say the apocryphal books was never part of the Bible, then you wouldn't have certain uh, phrases, certain uh, certain passages in the Gospels that the Messiah that the Messiah mentioned because he Messiah studied from this book. All right, um, Matthew twenty-seven and forty-three. We are almost done with the lesson. Matthew twenty-seven and forty-three. Matthew twenty-seven and forty-three. This is what it says: He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Matthew 27, 43. So, who said who say they the son of God? Who said they the son of God? The Messiah did, man. Alright? Because this day was making fun of the Messiah when he was on the cross, man. Okay? Because they were saying he saved others, he cannot save himself. You know what I'm saying? If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross. And we will believe in him. You know what I'm saying? Like, they wanted the Messiah to, the, 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 to free himself from, from crucifixion. And then they also mocked them in 2743 of Matthew. He trusted in God, let him deliver, let, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Matthew 27, 43, right? So let's go to the wisdom of Solomon 2, chapter 2, verse 15, in the Apocrypha. The wisdom of Solomon 2 and 15, in the Apocrypha. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 15. Using that as a precept to show you where this actually came from. 2 and 15. It says, Right? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15. He is grievous unto us even to behold. For his life is not like other men's. See. His ways are of another fashion. Verse 16. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounced the end of the just to be blessed. And make it his boast that God is his father. We already showed you that. So in Matthew 27 and 43. They said for he said I am the son of God. Because like I told you man. The apocrypha. The wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 2. Talks about the forecoming of the Messiah. Even in the apocrypha. The apocrypha talks about the forecoming of the Messiah man. We already know showed you that guys. 2 Chronicles 3 and 18. Let's go there in the Bible. Because a lot, most of you brothers don't know this. Watch this. Even in Chronicles. Let's go outside the Gospels now. Because we were dealing with the four Gospels. How they was pulling from the Apocryphal books. Let's go to Chronicles. Let's go back into, let's go back into the Tanakh. Let's go back into some Old Testament books. 2 Chronicles 3 and 18. Watch this. 2 Chronicles 3 and 18, guys. Let's 
skip over to chapter 3. All right? Here we go. Second Chronicles 3 and 18. I don't see an 18 verse there. Maybe I put something wrong. No, I didn't. I didn't put nothing wrong there. I didn't put nothing wrong there. Just seeing what you guys listening. Paying attention. Now, in 2 Chronicles, a lot of brothers and sisters don't know this. In 2 Chronicles, you know the 2 Chronicles stop on chapter 7. 2 Chronicles stop with verse... 2 Chronicles chapter 3 stops on verse 17. Well, you know what? You know what is the rest of the Chronicles? Do you really know what is the rest of Chronicles? The rest of 2 Chronicles stopping on 2 Chronicles 3 and 17. The rest of that is the prayer of Manassas in the Apocrypha, man. All right? <laughs> Yes, guys, I told you, man, you want to say that they're apocryphal books? You want to say that these books was never part of the Bible? I'm going to drop Jews on you. I'm going to drop the Jews on you. I'm gonna, this, this is revelation and free game, man. So in 2 Chronicles, chapter 3, verse 17, many brothers and sisters think it stopped there. It don't stop there, guys. The rest of 2 Chronicles, stopping on 3 and 17, the rest of that is the prayer of Manassas. Where is that found? In the Apocrypha, man. You can do your research. We can go to that right now. The prayer of... They know what I'm talking about. The prayer of, of Manassas. Prayer of Manassas. The Prayer of Manassas, guys. That's where Second Chronicles chapter three and seventeen. After that, the Prayer of Manassas come in. Now it's only one chapter in this book in the Apocrypha, and you can read that for yourself to see how it lines up. All right. So don't tell me that the Apocrypha was never part of the Bible. Now I'm gonna show you something else. Because when you go into the wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, watch this, guys. When you go into the wisdom of Solomon, let's go back to that. In the Apocrypha, when you go to the wisdom of Solomon, right? And um, let's say this is in the Apocrypha, the wisdom of Solomon. This whole entire book. That King Solomon wrote. Let's look at 1 Kings 11 and 31. 1 Kings 11 and 31. Did anyone show me this? No. The Most High and the Spirit showed me. I labored on my free time and I went throughout myself. And I searched the scriptures to see what was true. 1 Kings 11 and 31. And he said to Jeroboam, take thee ten pieces. For thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and give thee ten tribes get ten tribes to thee. That was um speaking of the kingdom to be uh dissected. The nation of Israel was to be severed. So watch this. So he says that uh um the, the nation of Israel was on the verge of being split, right? Watch this. I'm typing in the Acts of Solomon. First Kings 11 and 41. Because I think I gave you guys the wrong verse there. First Kings 11 and 41. I think I said 31. Salakia. Forgive me, guys. 1 Kings 11 and 41. And the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did in his wisdom are not written in the book of the act. Is it not? Are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? Let me read that again. The rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did in his wisdom are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? What is the, what is the acts of Solomon? In the Apocrypha. Now what books that Solomon wrote in the Apocrypha? What books that Solomon 
What books that he wrote in the pocket for? He wrote Sirach, aka Ecclesiasticus. He wrote the the wisdom of Solomon. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back. Uh show you guys right quick because the lesson is that the lesson has come to an end. This lesson has come to an end, guys. And um, I'm just showing you books that Solomon established in the Apocrypha. All right, wait a minute. You don't cover all these verses, so if you stuck with me this long, guys, hopefully your composition books will be looking pretty good. All right. That if you stuck with me thus far, because I know this is a long lesson, but all right, you can see right there. Um, in the apocryphal books, right? They call it Deuto Deuto Ron Deuto Ron Canical Deuto Ron Deuto Ron Canical, which is the apocryphal books. The Wisdom of Solomon was written by Solomon, right? Ecclesiastes Sirach was written by King Solomon. These two books right here in the Apocrypha, right, is known in 1 Kings 11 and 41 as the Acts of Solomon. All right, guys? So uh, if you don't have the Apocrypha, you don't have the complete Bible. If you don't have the Apocrypha, you are missing, if you're missing the Apocrypha books, you don't have the complete Bible. You're also missing 300 to 400 years of history. And um, you guys need these books. Now, I can show you many more things that the Bible pulls from concerning the Apocrypha. But I, this would be like a five-hour lesson, man. I'm telling you. Oh, man. We, we talking about the book of Esther, right? The You know what I'm saying? When you go to the book of Esther in the Bible, the rest of the book of Esther is in the Apocrypha. I mean, like, it's crazy, yo. I mean, I'm just giving you, you know, some book chapter and verses from the Apocrypha to let you see that when you're reading in the Bible, man, these four Gospels heavily quoted from these books, especially like uh, the Gospel Luke and the Gospel John and the, and the Gospel Matthew. They quoted from the Apocrypha, man. And so when you go into the Bible, you're reading about Esther, the story of Esther. The rest of the book of Esther is in the Apocrypha, man. Because the book of Esther ends with chapter 10, verse 3. And the rest of that... You know what I'm saying? The rest of the book of Esther is in the Apocrypha, man. Because when you when you go into the Apocrypha and you start off with the book of Esther, it starts from chapter 10. So the Roman Catholic Church that removed these Apocryphal books from the Bible, they knew damn well what they was doing. Because these damn devils, the so-called white man, which is the damn devil, did not want the nation of Israel, blacks and Spanish and Blacks and Spanish and Native Americans did not want to provide them which was which, which was necessary. And so they took out the, the, the records, man. I can show you, man. I can listen to me. I can show you many more book chapter and verse. I want to do that. But this is like an hour and eight minutes so far. I can even tell you reasons the apocryphal the apocryphal was removed from the Bible. You know what I'm saying? But uh, hopefully I can tie that into another lesson. Yeah, guys. And so the Apocrypha is very important. Once again, the Apocrypha means hidden books. You know what? This is not really, when you talk about the Apocrypha books, the 14 Apocrypha books, that's not really the actual name for the 14 books. Uh, dealing with starting out with 1st and 2nd Ezra and stopping on 1st and 2nd Maccabees. That's not really the name of the books. They call it the Apocrypha because the Roman Catholic Church, for the fact, tried to hide the 14 books. That's why you got the Anglican Bibles and the Protestant Bibles that don't have the, the 14 Apocrypha books in it. Apocrypha means hidden books because the Roman Catholic Church tried to hide these books from us as the nation of Israel. And so they tried to hide these books because these books was given, uh, these books was given outstanding information you know, to, to piece the puzzle, man. So without the apocryphal books, guys, yes. You know, you don't have the Bible. You don't have the complete Bible, man.
You got 400 years of missing history. Like the apocryphal books even tell you that hell is on earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, it tells you that, literally. It tells you that. I can go into all this, but like I said, I'm not going into it. Maybe I can tie this up into another lesson. You know, apocryphal books also mentions the fact that reincarnation is probable, is literal. That reincarnation is a fact. The apocryphal books talks about that. You see, the apocryphal books also tells you that the virgin birth is bullshit. The apocryphal books proves that the Native Americans, the 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 North Central and South American Indians, the 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 the, uh, the indigenous people, the apocryphal proves that they are the Israelites from the Northern Kingdom, the House of Israel. The apocryphal proves that the Edomites are the Gentiles, which is the so-called white people. The apocrypha also, the apocrypha also brings up the fact that the Gentiles in the New Testament who Paul and Peter preached to were dispersed Israelites that strayed away from the covenants, lost their nationality, didn't know their identity. The, the apocrypha books also expose that the, the false image of Jesus today, that white man with the blonde hair, blue eyes and red skin, is Cesare Borgia that was set up by the Roman Catholic Church. He was placed at the new Christ. The apocrypha proves also that the white man, which are the heathen painted the likeness of their images. This book proves a whole lot of stuff, man. This is why the Roman Catholic Church, the same white man, these devils that was over the RCC, this is why they eradicated these books from the Bible. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, man. The apocryphal books. Drop jewels on a lot of information that you need. So without further ado, I'm going to close this lesson. Now, hopefully I gave you what's needed. On the behalf of Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. Guys, any one of you that want to, that want to protest against the apocryphal books, want to come against the apocryphal books and say they was never part of the Bible, you better do some more research, man. Because before the 1800s, the apocryphal books was always Consider in scripture. Until next time, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video with many others. Guys, please. Okay, before we close out, the last extra note. Listen, guys. In the Catholic Bible, the books, the books of Daniel has 14 chapters. In the Catholic Bible, the books of Daniel has 14 chapters. Why do, why do not the book of Daniel and the Anglican and Protestant Bibles have 14 chapters? Because in the Anglican and Protestant Bibles, the book of Daniel only have, uh, only have 12 chapters, man. Wait a minute. Let's see how many chapters. This I promise you, I promise you guys, this is the last thing I'm going to cover. Let's see how many chapters in the book of Daniel, man. In the, in the Anglican and Protestant Bibles. The book of Daniel, how many chapters in, is in the book of Daniel? Let's put Daniel 13. Let's see something. It says your request for chapter 13 was changed. Your request for chapter 13 was changed to the last chapter. So it tells you ain't no 13 chapters in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel only consists of 12 chapters. The book of Daniel only consists of 12 chapters. That is, if you got an Anglican and a Protestant Bible, you're going to only have 12 chapters in the book of Daniel. Now, wait a minute. But that ain't in the Catholic Bibles. In the Catholic Bibles, the book of Daniel has 14 chapters. What's going on? <laughs> because I told you, man, these white people, they know. The, the, the Roman Catholic Protestants, you had two groups of you had two groups of Catholics. The Roman Catholic Protestants, they are the one that protested to have the apocryphal books move. The other Catholic Church said it was cool. So they kept what you call what you call Baal and the Dragon? What you call Baal and the Dragon and Susanna is all part of Daniel. So in the Catholic Bibles, the book of Daniel has 14 chapters. But in your Anglican Protestant Bibles, they don't. Chapter 13 is Susanna and chapter 14 is the Baal and the Dragon. Now Susanna and the Baal and the Dragon is mentioned in the Apocryphal books.
Chapter 13 is the book of Susanna and chapter 14 is Baal and the Dragon. They are both considered apocryphal. Baal and the Dragon, this is what the Roman Catholic Church and this is what the white man says. Baal and the Dragon is so ludicrous, it's hard to believe anyone consider it inspired by God. If you are having a bad day, you need to read Baal and the Dragon because they say that you would get a good laugh from reading Baal and the Dragon. So-called white men is a goddamn devil that always made mockery of God's word, man. Bell and the dragon, Bell and the dragon is not ludicrous. It's ludicrous to the crackers and the heathens that don't have the legitimate information and precepts to break down the book of the, uh, the book of Bell and the Dragon. So if you wonder why Daniel starts on chapter twelve, and you thinking that's all it is, Daniel has fourteen chapters total. Chapter thirteen, Susanna. Chapter fourteen. Is Bell and the Dragon. Then Daniel, then Daniel ends. Daniel do not end on no 12th chapter, man. But it does in the Anglican and Protestant Bibles because the Catholic, because the Catholics, Protestants in the 1800s removed these books. To next time, farewell. Have a nice day. Share the video. Edify others. Shalom.